Algae is actually quite different in two, in two basic ways. One is that the productivity of algae is between, you know, 20 and 200 times better per acre than other, uh, uh, other types of biofuel feedstocks. And the second thing is we don't need farmland uh, to grow algae. We build what we need on the top of the ground. So it could be non-arable land. It, it, it doesn't have to be farmland because we don't plant anything. We build these very specialized raceway ponds uh, that you've seen and we grow our special algae in a special way within those. So we don't have to plant stuff in the ground and wait for it to grow up. We build our bioreactor on top of the ground so we can do it not anywhere, but almost anywhere. You don't, you don't need to take up farmland to do it. Algae needs about 2.2 pounds of CO2 for every one pound of growth. Uh, just like all plants need CO2, uh, algae needs CO2. The difference is a tree might take 100 years to grow. Algae takes about 48 hours. So the life cycle of CO2 that it needs, it needs in a very small amount of time. So we're going to be building algae farms next to CO2 emitters, like coal-fired power plants, factories that push out a lot of CO2. CO2 is one of those inputs that people will pay you to take. So we're gonna be locating close enough that we can take the CO2 out of those smokestacks. For instance, here in Florida, you might have a, an algae farmer that grows algae, produces the oil that's made into biodiesel locally and consumed by Florida consumers near the farm. So it's almost like a closed loop you can take CO2 out of the air, grow algae, make oil, make biodiesel, and consume it all in the same area. As, um, as the United States catches up to the rest of the world uh, for renewable, sustainable biofuels, because the rest of the world is ahead of us a little bit on, on this particular topic, um, I think more people are going to be interested in the clean environment and biofuels that are more efficient and then we remove that water with the algae in it, the mature algae, take the algae out and we put the water back. Uh, we recycle you know, our, our water because water is a precious uh, commodity also in here and in many parts of the world. So we have about a 98% recycling of water. Some of it evaporates and we lose a little bit in the process, but for the most part, we wanna keep that water because instead of harvesting once a year, like you do most crops, we're harvesting every day or two. I hope that it will reduce costs, reduce environmental impact, and also reduce this dependence that we've talked about. So we have a sort of a, a two-sided benefit, uh, removing CO2 and replacing fossil fuel that's sustainable and renewable right here. People ask about the cost of this fuel, and you know, we, we have to be cost competitive. And, and it's very important for us to be economically viable as well as sustainable and environmentally friendly. But I think we, we all have to look at the cost of not doing this. What's the cost if we ignore the environment? What's the cost if we leave a dirty planet for our children and our children's children? It's hard to put a price on that.